Whether you're building custom door panels, a center console, custom A-pillars, a subwoofer enclosure, or even a custom amplifier rack or any sort of other car audio project, you need to be able to make shapes. These shapes are the geometry that will form a build and you want those shapes that you create to be unique but also perfect. Any weird imperfections will stick out like a sore thumb. Now, if you're new to the channel, I frequently use these smart templates from our show sponsor, Mobile Solutions. These are a pre-made shape that is very efficient and easy to use. But what if you want to make your own unique shape? Hey everybody, I'm Mark. Welcome to Car Audio Fabrication. Here on this channel, together we learn how to master car audio and how to design, build, and install our dream car audio system. Let's go through the process. Now, real quick, before we get into it though, a thank you to our sponsor for this episode, New Concepts. When you're installing a custom car audio system, you of course need wiring, and they have it all. From power and ground wire to speaker wire, RCA signal wires, and many different wire distribution parts, they have you covered. I've personally used New Concepts for a long time now, long before I actually even started this channel. I've always had great results. Their gear is reliable and a great value. Be sure to check out New Concepts for your next build at the links down in the video description. First things first, we want to start with a good plan. So we wanna do some brainstorming here. And obviously this is going to change depending on the application that you're addressing. But in this case, let's say that we want to make a trim ring around a subwoofer. This trim ring could add some detail. It could also be used to conceal some lighting or the edges of a pressed protective grill. Lots of different options for what we could do here. But in this case, let's say that we're designing for a trim ring on a subwoofer enclosure. You'll notice I have some grid paper here and I also have a tape measure and that's because I've measured the outside of the subwoofer. It's about 10 and a half inches. So I'm going to draw a circle that is about that grid size in order to scale this down. During our brainstorming process here, we do want to consider our overall goal with this shape in its design. In other words, do we want hard, aggressive lines or do we want it to be more elegant and curvy? These are things that we should consider in order to match the rest of the aesthetic of our build. In my case, this is what I've come up with here, and I'd encourage you not to try to get overly complicated. Just some simple geometry can go a long way and look really cool. Now, you also need to consider if you want your design to be symmetrical or not. In this case, I do want it to be symmetrical upon this center line here, and that's where the grid comes in handy. I can make sure that I count out the grid spaces in each direction to draw this symmetrically, and that's also going to come in handy later when we actually physically make this shape. Now, when you in your brainstorming phase here, you can start with the outside of the shape and work in, but in this case, since I'm trying to go around something, I wanna make sure that it's large enough to go around that something. So in this case, I'm drawing the inside shape first, and then I just draw some parallel lines around the outside that are going to be our template shape. With our basic shape now designed, we can move on to moving this to a piece of actual material. Now again, here is where the grid comes in handy. I'm going to cut a rectangle of material Material that I'm going to make this shape with, and we're gonna be focusing on making the outside profile. So I'm going to actually cut this dimension right now because I have a straight top and a straight bottom. I might as well get those straight sides just using my table saw, or you could also use a circular saw with a guide. The material we want to start from to make our template shape is half inch MDF. With our piece now cut, we want to replicate this same grid pattern on the piece. It's definitely always handy to have a center line to work off of, especially since this is symmetrical, so I start with drawing that. Now to draw our grid, we could carefully measure in one inch increments and use a square and draw a line across. We could also take a ruler that is exactly one inch wide. We could line it up on this side and scribe a line. But if you do wanna be ultra efficient, you could use a tool like this. This is the Smart Ruler from our show sponsor, Mobile Solutions. We can just line this up on the edge and this allows us to easily, quickly draw one inch spaced lines or we could do on both sides of the slot there and have a half inch grid. With all of our vertical lines now added, we just need to add those horizontal lines. Now, first of all, just for reference, I do want to draw a circle that is the approximate size of the outside of the subwoofer. In this case, it's not critical 
circle that it's exactly the same size. So I'm just going to use this circle template. But just in case you don't have a template like this, that doesn't mean that you can't do this technique. Sometimes you need to think outside of the box. An example of a way that we could sketch a circle to match the outside of our subwoofer here is we could actually take some cardboard from a cereal box. We could just cut a little strip of it. And what you can do is you can push a push pin through part of that cardboard and have that be your center location. And then you can make another hole with another push pin for the lead of your pencil. And you can really use that as a makeshift compass to draw a circle. Another example of thinking outside the box throughout this process, you're going to see me use some of these straight templates to cut some of this straight geometry. But I could also just use an old scrap piece of wood that has a straight edge. I think it's just important to realize that although you may not have the efficient tools that make things quick and easy as you work up to earning those tools there's always another way to tackle these projects now don't forget that I've already cut the top and bottom straight lines just by making this board here on the table saw but next I want to add this side straight geometry here so I'm carefully counting out each of the grids in each direction and then transferring that line and of course doing that on both sides again you can really see where this grid is handy for quickly laying out our geometry and making sure that we have symmetry. This grid becomes especially handy as we do more complex geometry, something like an arc here where we may need it to line up halfway through a grid mark. It just allows us to line up a lot more quickly and easily. Now the other thing I like about this grid is let's say that we line something up and we don't really like the way it looks. I actually counted out in my measurement here, it's five squares from the edge to here. So one, two, three, four, five. And if I line up my arc like this, I don't know that I really like this shape. I kind of don't like that the top corner here is going to be a little bit inside of where this bottom corner is. I think I'd rather maybe have them match or maybe even move the arc a little bit more and kind of have it inside of that edge kind of trying to decide here. The point is I can easily get a real world representation and visualization of what this shape is going to look like. Quick side note, I just realized that when I drew this line, I drew to the wrong grid position originally, so I've corrected it here. This is another advantage of the grid. It's pretty easy to visualize as you look from side to side if everything matches. I've decided that I like where this point ends a little bit more inset on each side, so I've drawn those arcs in. Now we want to soften up these corners. We obviously don't want a sharp outside corner there unless that was the design that we were going for. I'm going for this little bit more rounded look and I might actually change up a little bit from my design here because if I have such a small radius on the outside there, that means it's going to be a really small tight radius on the inside there just like I've drawn. So I think I wanna go with a larger radius that way I have more of a radius on the inside. This will make more sense as we work through the process. So I'm gonna grab this large circle size from the smart circle system from mobile solutions I'm gonna line this circle up so that it's tangent to each of my existing lines and the reason it's advantageous learning how to design these shapes from scratch is if you do start to do this in CAD or more of a 3d program where you're then going to use a CNC machine you're gonna have a better understanding of how to make these shapes and to draw them now although I could use a different circle size in different corners here I'm gonna use that same circle size in each location now here it is we've created the outside of our shape and that's all we need to do you're going to see how we make the inside of this shape now on the router. For right now, all we need to worry about is the outside profile. In order to make sure that each of these profiles is absolutely perfect, we're going to take this over to our router table. Now I totally get it. If you don't have a router table or a router station, I can understand being a bit overwhelmed here. I personally think the router is one of the most powerful tools that you can have for custom car audio. So I definitely encourage you to get one. And I'll put a link up in the corner of the screen to the one I recommend. But I also point out in that video how you can use a router and make your own router table if needed. Again, there is always more than one way to do a test. For me, it makes sense to have this nice router lift as I can be ultra precise and efficient. But as you work your way up to something like this, you can definitely still do these simple techniques with something as simple as a router mounted upside down 
into a makeshift table. The key router bit system that is part of this process is the smart pattern system. This has this ultra large rabbiting bit. You're gonna see how we use this in just a second, but it also comes with this quarter inch drill bit and the quarter inch spiral flush trim bit. First, I've loaded up the quarter inch spiral flush trim bit, and we're going to be using that to cut this outside profile. But the first thing that I recommend that we do here, since we're going to be combining different profile shapes and removing and reattaching multiple different templates, is we want to rough cut outside of this shape with a jigsaw, saving about a quarter of an inch or an eighth of an inch of material. With that rough cutting process complete, we now want to start to perfect our shape. Now, I recommend that you start with your straight edge profiles first. Again, remember that we already have the top and bottom finished just based on our design here, but I do need to cut this angled cut here with this straight template. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to use some double-sided template tape in order to stick this in position. Next, I'm going to raise our router bit out of the table so that these bearings ride against our template. And that way, they're going to match the template profile and cut the shape down below. You can lock that in place, and after I turn on the router, I can make that cutting pass. That straight edge profile is now perfect, and I can repeat this process as needed for those straight edges. Next, I'm going to add the arc edges as well, and the process here is the same, using template tape to stick the template in position and then copying it. After we do that, you can see how nice and smooth and perfect these arcs are, obviously, as they copy the template profile. The last step here is I need to add the rounded corners, so I'm going to do that again, the same process. An important side note on this cut, we want to make sure that we start and stop the bit where the circle is tangent to the edges. Don't get carried away and keep following that circle as you'll ruin your piece. Check it out, guys. We now have a completely original custom organic shape completely made on the outside profile. Now we want this to be a trim ring of sorts. So how can we shrink down this outside profile perfectly and have an inside profile cut out. Well, that's where this bit comes into play, this massive one and one eighth inch rabbit bit. You're gonna notice that this has a half inch shank. If you are looking to purchase a router, definitely make sure that your router is capable of using either a half inch or a quarter inch shank. It should be able to handle both by switching out the collets. Right now, I need to swap out this router bit and put this one in its place. Remove this insert plate, raise the current bit up out of the way, loosen this collet here, this is already the half inch collet that matches the new bit. So we'll add the bit in place. Usually go all the way in and then lift just slightly. We'll finger tighten that and now we can tighten it back up with our wrenches. We can lower this router bit down into the table. And in this case, we want it to be raised out of the table about an eighth of an inch. A good way to do this is I intentionally lower it until the piece slides over it and then I can go up 1 16th with one revolution plus a 16th, which is 1 8th of an inch up out of the table. This bit is huge and makes a ton of dust, so I'm intentionally not going to put an insert plate back in. I'm now going to turn on my dust collection, fire up this router bit, and I wanna make sure that I'm going against the rotation as I make this cutting pass. I obviously wanna make sure that I keep my fingers clear of the bit, so I'm using that push block to stay safe as well. Once we've gone all the way around that outside profile, if we flip this over, this is what we're going to see. We've basically cut into the material one and one eighth of an inch, and we've cut down into the material by an eighth inch, and you can see that we've made this step. Now, why is this step advantageous? Well, it's going to give us something to ride our bearing against using the quarter inch spiral flush trim bit. But as of right now, this is obviously a solid piece. How are we going to start that cutting pass? Well, that's where the quarter inch drill bit comes in. We need to drill a hole up against the edge of this step that's going to allow us to start that bit. To make sure that we don't accidentally dig into that step with our drill bit, I like to use the drill bit by hand, just carefully riding up against that step and kind of starting the point into the material. And then I follow up with using the actual power drill to drill the hole. So now that we have that hole drilled, we can carefully push our spiral flush trim bit through it 
like so. Now this is super critical. Make sure that you readjust the height of this bit. It needs to be a little bit lower from where it was earlier because we want those bearings to ride up against our edge. A little something like this. Now this is a critical cutting pass to make. I wanna make sure that before I turn on the router that I am securely holding the piece and applying light pressure up against the bearing. The reason for that is I don't wanna just turn it on and have it loose here because it's going to start spinning with the bit. As I make the cutting pass, I wanna make sure that I continue to have this surface firmly applied up against the bearing. I forgot to mention this previously, but notice that I also drilled our starting hole on a flat part of our shape. You don't wanna go on a curved area if you can avoid it. So here we are making this cutting pass, and as we get to the end here, this is super important, we wanna make sure that we push that outside shape away from the router bit once the cut is complete. Now just the way that I happen to be applying pressure there, it kind of tilted my piece up and out of the way instead, but the point is you want to get this piece away from the bit as it completes that router pass because what you're doing is you're allowing this gap here to kind of suck up and that allows some extra room between this and the bit. That way it's not accidentally grinding against the bit like this if you were to accidentally pull the outer shape this direction. I want to continue to hold pressure here as I turn off the router and let it come to a complete stop. Now you'll notice that we have this little nib here and this is unavoidable, you're always going to have this, but this is why you want to start on a flat edge because we can easily take a sanding block and sand this away. So with just a few different basic shapes and geometry, we've created a one of a kind template shape that we could use in a variety of different applications. In this case, how cool would this be as a custom trim ring for a subwoofer enclosure? Now, a few other things to consider here. There is a way that if we did want to shrink this down and continue making nested profiles inside, let's say that we wanted to have this be one color of vinyl and we wanted a separate piece, another color of vinyl. There is a way to do that. And I'm thinking about turning this into a full video series covering that technique as well. Something else you might wanna do is maybe shrink this profile. In other words, the thickness from this surface to this surface, you might want to have it be a thinner trim ring. Maybe you're doing something like some A pillars and you need a much smaller ring around there. That's another technique that I could show you guys as well. If you do want more fabrication lessons, I have a ton of videos here on the channel and I'd love to have you as a subscriber. And if you have any questions, be sure to drop me a line down below. Next time you need any sort of car audio wiring or power distribution parts, be sure to check out our show sponsor, New Concepts, at the link down below. A big thanks to them along with Jerry and the rest of the Patreon membership team for making these videos possible and thank you guys so much for tuning in and watching.